What up, though? Welcome back to the World Redweights Live on Sports.com. I'm Easy. Spin more racks. Young Chris. No JB. We got Detroit Kool Aid and Booner in the building. But we're also joined by the legendary Detroit Lions wide receiver, Herman Moore. <sighs> hey, what's good? What up, man? Hey, I gotta get you. I gotta get that theme music, man. I keep forgetting to bring it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you what, man. I, I, every time I go to the games and I come out and I'm looking, I'm like, dude, just the, the vibes, just the. I'm, I'm older now, but I'm thinking, wow, man, I could goddamn run like at least one hitch route, a little slant route, a little end zone fade. Hey, hell yeah! Can you can you play tight end? <laughs> can you play tight end? Yeah, 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 might, might might. Need. <laughs> well, first, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! No, you gotta play tight end. <laughs> What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? <laughs> because a brother like to eat and like to put a weight that he's got to all of a sudden go to, to tight end. I'll be, I'll be a big, I'll just be a big Z receiver. How come, how come like, uh, I actually do wonder that, like wide receivers like towards the end of the career, because tight ends are like bigger guys like and a little bit slower. Like how come no one ever tried to transition to that position? Is it just too hard? The body's too banged up or, or what? I think it's a natural progression. If you are a receiver and you, you start to get a little bit slower, uh, but you start putting on a little bit more muscle because it's easier to go up than it is down, I found, as a wide receiver in weight. Uh, so typically, if you're 6'4", you know, whether I'm 223, 225 pounds or 240, 250, that's just going to be speed and or muscle. Um, so I, I think that's a great transition for a wide receiver, especially if they have size, to go from uh, wide receiver to tight end because you're going to have some advantages too. Huh. And go ahead. I just wanted to get right into it. Like, it, it, this, is, this is playoff week. The yeah. Lions are placed the first ever home playoff game hosted in Ford Field. I just wanted to get into your mind a little bit about how different it is for a professional athlete, for an NFL player to get into that playoff mode. Is it the same as w how you prepare for a regular season game or what goes into preparing for a playoff matchup? Well, the playoff game is, is not as bad as people think. It's If anything, it becomes a little bit easier because you've gone through pretty much all the scenarios during the season. And while your opponent, you may not have played that opponent, you're, you're definitely prepared, but they're gonna not be at any advantage or disadvantage, nor will you, it's all about how you prepare. And I, I was gonna say, you know, tell, tell you this, is that uh, the, the hardest thing is practice, is practicing during the week because you're getting all the reps then, you're doing a lot of the work. So when it comes down to game time, you know, you only have 30, maybe 40 plays offensively or defensively to make an impact or win a football game on that side of the ball. So um, the, the playoff and the games, it's all about focus, it's mental preparation, and it's about just coming in sharp. I don't think you even, you go out, you, you can address the legs of your players because you want the, your team to be fresh uh, coming in. You don't want guys getting injured or being um, overdoing it in practice. So I, I would see this as being more of a subliminal and a more of a mental week of preparation uh, for this Detroit Lion team, more so than just physically going out and running these guys into the ground. Speaking of these guys, this happens to be a, a former one of our guys, Matthew Stafford, and I'm sure you had a personal relationship with him because uh, he was here 12 years. What was your initial reaction once that news became official, uh, Matthew Stafford having Detroit <laughs> to play uh, us at home for the first time? It's 93. Man, I don't think you could. I don't think you could have written this any better in mm -hmm. terms of like the epic matchup of a star franchise quarterback leaving and being traded to a team and then having another player who was supposed to be their franchise leader be brought to another team. One has already taken his team to the Super Bowl and then you got another one now who's been part of the resurgence and the turnaround that's happened with the Detroit Lions football team. So now you really get to see this head-to-head -head matchup. And I think all things being equal, uh, you have the Detroit Lions defense that's you know, not playing the greatest of football, but I think they're playing adequate enough to be able to come away with wins. Uh, but they're gonna have to cut down on some of the big plays. You got an offense in uh, golf and all the receivers around him and St. Brown, you know, using Reynolds. And then, you know, you bring in, um, you know, just Sam LaPorta, you know, depending on what happens with his injury, but you got a running game, you know, you got this balanced offense and a fairly decent defense against another really good offense and a pretty good defense coming all together and it's not going to be one of those boring opening wild card weekend games so i'm looking forward to it man i think this is this has everything you would want uh in terms of storyline in the media and i just wanted to ask about some of the guys coming back from injury that some of them already played we saw chauncey gardner johnson out there he had the interception we saw lee mcneil make some big plays get some pressures on the quarterback how hard is it for a player that's coming off of an injury that has been off for a long time to just boom right into the playoffs where it's the most intense football they'll see all year. 
you know, it comes down to really where are they in their preparation? You know, are they more of a veteran player? The younger players, I think, would struggle in a situation like that. But if you have a few years under your belt, it's just about being mentally prepared. Uh, physically, you've been prepared all year because that's what the off season's for. That's what training camp's for. And right now, it's who's the healthiest team going into the, the playoffs um, that will, will ultimately give themselves the best chance to win. I will say this. It's, it's if you mentally check out on a team and you're not around and because of your injury or your time away doesn't allow you to be a part of the, the game planning or being a part of those meetings uh, because you're in such intensive rehab, then it's a little different. But I, I just think guys aren't going to miss that much time. Uh, so when Johnson now being back in the mix, I think them getting healthier in the secondary, um, you know, it, it, that's going to be a, a big key component to them. But I think if I'm looking at this game, it's going to come down to their defensive scheme more so than the individual players. It's going to be how do they contain uh, what they don't know is going to happen and what type of playbook is going to be thrown at them uh, from the Rams. Speaking of guys, missing time. Uh, we had some injuries in Week 18. Well, what are your thoughts, I guess, and again, as guys have been to the playoffs, what are your thoughts on unresting guys versus heading to the min well, playoffs with a little bit of momentum there? And, and obviously, Detroit Lions dealing with some injuries because of that reason. Yeah, I, I think... I was a little concerned about coming into this one about letting guys get get injured. You know, you're going to be, there was a lot that needed to happen for them to go into the number two seed position. I get it. You don't know what may happen. You saw Philadelphia basically crashed and burned against the Giants, but Dallas ended up winning, which, you know, took them to that number two seed position. But uh, I think at the risk of players getting injured, knowing that you have that postseason play, regardless, you're going to be playing at home. I don't think I risk too much. Uh, at, on the line at that point. I don't think there's anything to prove because you're going to have to face those teams no matter what is thrown your way. And I'd rather face whomever. It doesn't matter if it would even with San Francisco if you were going to be able to play them at home. So you got to go through all these teams regardless. It's about who's going to be healthiest. Uh, that's going to make the difference in the playoffs. And that's what we saw. The teams that came in uh, you know, most healthy, most rested, uh, the momentum is it's, it's done. I mean, it, it, the momentum is what gets you there. Then you come off of that high energy and all of a sudden, it comes back down to just being serious and focused, uh, and that's what it's gonna it's gonna make the difference. It doesn't matter about all the hype. It doesn't matter about guys being all, you know, ready to go and geared up and all that stuff. That that's not what's gonna win playoff games. It's gonna be the team that pays attention to detail, and and focuses in more on the the you know the plays and the exactness of of what they need to do in their sound and their assignments and things of that nature. And. I look at it as obviously this Detroit Lions team is extremely young. You've got a lot of players in their first, second, third year out there. And a lot of guys that haven't experienced playoff matchups, even veterans on this team that haven't experienced playoff matchups. How much do those guys kind of lean on the Jared Goffs, the Chauncey Gardner Johnsons, and even the coaching staff for how the playoff football should feel or how they should prepare for that? Guys that have been there before. For the guys that have already been there, you can look at a coach, you can look at uh, veteran guys like a Jared Goff who have that experience and other players that may have played in postseason play. But the only thing they can give you is how to mentally, you know, what get your mind right, how to rest your body, how to prepare during the week. But ultimately, if you're a young player, unless you've experienced it, um, and you or you have someone who's a veteran that's gonna be out leading the charge and setting the example, it, it's a first for most of them. It's a first for a lot of these young guys. You know, don't forget, you know, the Detroit Lions are one of the youngest teams in the NFL. And in, in being that, this is this is new territory for them. But I think their ability to respond to it means if I'm a coach, if I'm anyone like Jerry Goff, I'm focused on saying, listen, minimize the penalties and the mistakes. We need everything. We need everything to click, be sound in the assignments. He's got to not take unnecessary chances. Uh, with the football, the running backs have to protect the football. And defense, they have to get after it. Don't give up the big plays. Uh, try and force some turnovers and, and all of those things. I mean, it's going to be very basic uh, in terms of how you get them prepared. And for these, these players who haven't experienced it, it's just going to be take a deep breath. Um, I'm Jerry Goff. I'm going in and saying, listen, play your best. Leave it all out there, but play smart. Play smart and aggressive and be sound in everything you do. And if you do those things, the rest will take care of itself. You'll, the game will end up being what it'll be if you go out and take care of your business and sound in your assignment. Um, I'm going to St. Brown. Because we got all week to talk about playoffs. If you want to come back on it, if it is week, I'm, I'm totally down. But I got to ask, man, this, our guy got snubbed from the Pro Bowl. Uh, 
Yeah. Wow. How? Fifteen hundred yards, ten touchdowns. <laughs> it's crazy. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell you like this, and this is this is very specific to to St. Brown, and I think even my guy Calvin man would agree. You know what? He, he's a Pro Bowler. Those the stats that he had, the uh, things that he did to be deserving of a position to get snubbed, is 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 wrong. And for me, the, this is his second Pro Bowl. Whether he gets as an alternate, whether he ends up ultimately still going or not. Um, this is one hell of a year for that young man and just really super proud of just his professionalism, the way he goes about his business. So I tell, I'm telling this to him, Amara St. Brown, you killed it. You did it. You know what? You all pro bowl. And in my opinion, if I had to give it to you, I'll make you all pro because you did what you're supposed to do. You're doing it the right way. You're doing it as the underdog all the time. That's what we do. Sometimes we have to deal with in Detroit, but I tell you what, keep up it. Just the great work, the great work ethic. And man, he's making us proud. You know what I'm saying? So, all hands team, man. That's my guy. I love it. Love watching him work. And this is a guy we've seen get that outside motivation from stuff like this before. He's a guy who can name every single player that was drafted or every single wide receiver that was drafted before him. Do you think he builds another list with this? Do you think this is another thing that he puts out there? He says, all right, you guys are going to keep sleeping on me. Just wait, I'm going to go for 2000 next year. Well, see, here's the thing that comes out to that. It, it's, 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 it's a double-edged sword. He can be in the greatest condition he could be as prepared as he wants to be. What if Jerry Goff gets hurt? What if the, the offensive line has injuries? You know, you don't, you don't get this opportunity to be there all the time every season just because. Look at Justin Jefferson. You know, yeah, he's been coming on strong since he's been back from an injury. Amara St. Brown may get injured and have to take a step back for a second. You don't know. So to get snubbed or to be pulled out of that, I just tell him like this, man, he, he doesn't have to, to build uh, a hit list or an agenda uh, list or, 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 or a list to go after people who've kind of you know been against him and all those things, man. He's doing it the right way by being professional and by staying focused and the rest will be the rest. You know, he can only control his part. And from what I've seen so far, he's, he's catching the football like he's supposed to. He's running routes, he's playing tough, he's blocking, he's doing everything, man. And I just, you know, I, I, I can, as a, as a player who's had success at the NFL level and has been a, you know, all pro and all these things, I'm just telling you, I, I know one when I see one, and this young man is doing his thing, and along with a lot of the other players and, and even the ones that are supporting him uh, in that position. So even Jerry Goff, I thought, had an opportunity to, to also make the Pro Bowl. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there were, there were a few snubs I thought that were there uh, Gibbs? for them, but this was probably the most egregious. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Gibbs as well. Well, Monty too. Monty, Monty too. Yeah, uh, twelve touchdowns at the time. Yeah. Um. So it was surprising to me, man. I, I have to yeah. admit. And um, but but to him, like I said, man, we all see the work. We see the work that they put in. I like the fact that this is a very unselfish team. You feel the energy, man. I don't feel any like they're being false. I don't feel like they're 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 being these guys that are arrogant or uh, about themselves when they're out there. And I mean, that's that's what makes you feel proud as an alum, as a player that looks back at another one and goes, you know what, you're doing it the right way and you're doing it without feeling like you got to go out there and do it, you know, in, in such a, a distasteful way. They're, they're bringing grit, as we see, but they're also bringing toughness uh, mm -hmm. that I think will get them over some of the deficiencies they may have in other areas. Man, I could talk to you as a guy all day, yeah. man. Um, real quick, though, <laughs> we, we got a guy, Booner, in the building, and he has this uh, – it's this path. I, I, I'll let him explain it. Buddha, you want to ask Herman more about the path? Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't right now. I can't hear you, Herman, but it's an honor to talk to you. There, there's this thing that I've, I've created here around the network and, and I would say the city now called the Booner Path and, and kind of just getting fans to lock in kind of on kind of going to the Super Bowl and saying that, hey, this is realistic now for this Lions team. And I kind of want to ask you uh, your vision on this because, I, you know, first division in 30 years, everything that's going on um, in my mindset now for fans and everything is, is we put the SOL to, to bed. And um, now it's just every time this team takes the field, it should be they can win this football game. They can go win a Super Bowl. Everything going forward is positive about this team. And that's the path I created to where it's, hey, no matter what happens, this team should go look they, their mindset should be super bowl super bowl super bowl going forward going this year next year the year after and that's kind of the path that i've kind of thought here and, and tried to preach to the people want to see what your thoughts and, and hey maybe even if you want to join the booner path for 2024 <laughs> even this year I, I'm, I'm taking p I'm, I'm anyone can hop on here well i appreciate that i'll, I'll say this first uh 
that that's always the ambition. I wish I could say that that's unique to just the Detroit Lions or any team. That that's the path forward. I don't care what their record is the year before. Every team that starts their season, they they expect they're trying to make the postseason play. They're trying to win their division. They're trying to get into the the postseason so they can go to a Super Bowl. So it's not going to be necessarily, I would say, unique. But what I think you can hang your hat on here is that it's it's a possibility. The, you know, it's a real true possibility. I don't think this is where they're trying to be in fear of uh, a team being pulled apart. So you don't have to have that anxiety as a fan or as a player to say, well, I'll, which of our key players won't be here next year? You know, there is, you know, some rumblings that maybe they lose their offensive coordinator. That could become a factor. But I, I'll say this. I think every fan should be wanting their team to be a champion and go to the Super Bowl. Every player should be looking at the path forward and be on that same path with you saying, you know what, Super Bowl or bust. Uh, so I, I see that right now as the ultimate goal every year, all day, every day uh, that should be there. So I, I'll, I'll join that path. Their, their chances of getting there, you know, is a different story because I just don't think the road's that easy. If, if so, we'd see more teams that were dominant teams be Super Bowl champions. Uh, one year doesn't promise the next. And so this year, I think they ride this one as far as they can take it. And if it ends up being in the Super Bowl, win that damn game and bring it back and get that one out the way and get that off, you know, off off their back. Um, but if not, you you pick yourself up, you you enjoy what happened this year, and you come back next year with a vengeance, uh, with the same expectations. So that that's my that's my take on it. Um, you just made this so guy this know, guy's I, weak. I, I, this guy's so damn excited right path. now. Is it is it possible? Absolutely. Uh, but is it going to be easy and a given? Absolutely not. Speak, I agree. Speaking of the easy and given, I mean, the one ahead of them, what do, what do you think of the game? What, what, what are your uh, what are your takeaways for this matchup? Or do you want to say that one for later in the week? Uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick hit, and then we can come back and do it do it again. Um, I, I think what you have to be careful of and what the Lions have to be most fearful of right now is I'm looking at their defense. And again, I just find some holes. I find some ways in which you had only one guy, really, in Justin Jefferson. He has some support. You got a backup quarterback, but you let him almost go for 200 yards and and really be a factor when you only had one guy to, de- to really defend. Uh, that's that's problematic because the Rams are going to have a lot more um, weapons to go to. They're going to have a quarterback that is is savvy and smart. We know his grit and his toughness. And Matthew Stafford. And then defensively, you know they're going to have players who can make plays. Are they the same defense we've seen in the past uh, in their Super Bowl runs? No. But is this still a defense that's formidable? Absolutely. Uh, so big plays, I'm still a little bit concerned with on the Lions side. We see the takeaways. That's smoke and mirror to me because the quarterback just made some really bad throws. Uh, and then there were some plays, you know, obviously on their side by the Lions. But the big plays are the ones that, that are most glaring. Uh, and then offensively, just keeping guys healthy. Laporta is going to be a big part. Uh, if he's back, I think they, they have an opportunity to, to attack the Rams defense, which is that definitely has some vulnerabilities. Herbie, we appreciate you joining on. We're going to each get one more question in here before, before we let you go. We don't want to take up too much of your time. But my question is, there's a big game on tonight. You know, Michigan versus Washington. They're playing for the national championship game. I'm a Michigan State Spartan myself, so... I'm, I'm, I'm not cheering for anybody. I'm not going to say who I want to win, but we'll, we'll just see how it goes. What are your expectations for this game, and do you think Michigan can, can pull it off? Come on, Spence, man. First of all, man, you, listen, if your state's not in it, you've got to go for Michigan, unless you're from the state of Washington. Uh, now, you're not from Washington. No, I'm not. I know, that, I know that's going against the grain, man, but listen, I'm a Virginia guy. Virginia Tech was in the championship, and I went to Virginia. As long as they were from the state of Virginia, I'd be pushing for them, even though that's just not what we do at UVA. You know, and especially if they're part of a conference, right? You like the Big Ten? Yeah. yeah. Show them some love. Give them, give them that. I can't, I can't do it, I, man. I can't, <laughs> I can't do it, man. <laughs> All right. Well, having said that, then here's what we do. So, I Michigan, this is a, a great, great opportunity. I don't think it's going to slip through their their grasp. I look for Michigan to win um, and become, you know, 2024 uh, national champions, 2023, whichever way they do it. I know it's based on the new year, but. Uh, I look at them being the champions in this one. Uh, too much, too much on Michigan side defensively. I think offensively, they're just going to attack, uh, but be smart. And we've seen just how this team just really stays together, even in the face of uh, seems like they're going to they're going to lose things, uh, lose it down the stretch. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I've seen a lot of Michigan people I've gone through. They've had their gear on. I say, hey, good luck tonight. They say, hey, good luck next this upcoming weekend. 
you know, against the Rams. So yeah. we're all in we're all in one. Come on, man. They're in Michigan. Can't do it. Sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> Her mama, I, I want to rock some gear to this Lions playoff game, but I, I don't got none yet. Do you, do you know anywhere I can go to like to grab something like that? Um, let me check it out. Uh, yeah, there's this place. I just saw it. Oh, my stuff. You can rock my gear. You can go to Lions Nation Unite. And I got my new one out today. I don't know if you can see it. The Lions hired. Okay. Dan Campbell. The Lions won. Right? That's that's your that's your commemorative shirt right there. Come on. Y'all want that? Y'all Let's feel go. that? Come on. Oh yeah. Uh, but you can go to Lions Nation Unite. We're always dropping new gear, uh, new game day gear that they can wear. And then also we're gonna also continue to pour into this team and also the Detroit sports team. So check us out there. Lions Nation Unite. We read it. I got that we one ready. too. We, we read it. Come on. We read it. We read it. <laughs> hey. For we now. Come on. We read it. We read it. Chrissy told me to. Hey, Chris, on, told me to if you guys are if you guys order by by Wednesday, I think it is like the stuff will still get to them by Saturday. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, we'll do expediting shipping at no extra cost if they order by Wednesday. Um, they can get these, get the shirts. You can get your commemorative stuff, man. You can go in there and get some of this other cool stuff. We ready. Let's Come go. Come on now. We ready. That's awesome. And then uh, because you guys are watching us, we rock with you and Herman rocks with you too. Uh, 12% off for the Detroit Lions, 12 wins if you use the promo code Woodward84. And what's, what, what's the website again one more time? Lions Nation Unite. There you go. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The great. Herman Moore, thank you again for appreciate joining the show. Appreciate you so much, Herman. Uh, I'll All probably right. bug appreciate you later you, later on the week to get uh, get you back on before the game, if you don't mind. I'll Always. hit you up. We'll see. Always appreciate it. Appreciate, appreciate you, man. Thank you, All Herman. Right, thank you so much. Thanks, Eden. Thanks, man. Dude, Herman's the man. He is the man. It's, There's it's, literally so many things. Like when you, So many things I want to ask When you brought him. this taste ball, I wanted to ask as a player, like the, the Saints and, and the Falcons situation. Yeah. Is that... Is that unbroken code? Or, or that, as a professional, sure. just like, no, fuck that. We got to stop him. Like, I, there's so many things I asked that guy. Appreciate Herman for joining us. We did go over a few reasons. Even Herman will never get me to cheer for Michigan. I'm just saying that.